Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I was thinking more about these 15-minute cities. The idea that the WEF, the World Economic Thor Forum, seem to have come up with and ad advising governments. It seems all across the world they would very much like this concept of restricting people's movements, keeping them in a 15-minute city so that everything is pretty much 15 minutes away from you and that actually your life would be so much better if you could keep the population more contained. I think the worry is that the population is growing too much, that we're spreading out, that the globe is warming and whereas you could save a lot of energy, keep people much happier if they've been enclosed in these things. And now, I have no problem whatsoever with a think tank coming up and suggesting um, good quality ideas that the government might want to consider and then put forward to the people to say, hey, look, these are some ideas. What do you think? Do you think it would be a good idea if we contained you in a, in a certain area and restricted your movements? And if you did over, say, a hundred journeys into one zone to another, we'll fine you? Uh, we'll monitor you, monitor you with cameras. Do you think that's a good idea? Then at least the people of those towns of the society can say yes or no. I mean, in a democratic society, which isn't the best way of organising a society, but it's something that we've got, that people could show by a show of hands or by some form of voting that they were in favour of something like that or not. So I was interested to sort of think more about this because I don't think that we've been given that choice, which is a bit of a shame because I think that we ought to have been given the choice. And it seems a lot of these ideas that are coming down into the government and then down to us are being more foisted upon us without our engagement whatsoever. Trials are being done, I suppose. Councils are, are testing the water to see if it's going to work or not. Although people haven't actually, again, they haven't asked for it and voted for it. They haven't clamoured for it. They haven't been knocking on the council's door or writing to their MP or demanding that the Prime Minister have these restrictions on our lives. So it's an interesting situation to be in. Now, I was looking here online at uh, the sort of things that we might expect in a 15-minute city. Cameras, of course, is going to be the things that will make sure that our cars if we're traveling from one place to another is being monitored and of course calculated so that they can very fairly fine us if we've happened to have done it now in my mind there is a slight problem with that because you've got the business of who is the keeper of the car if you look at your i think it's a c5 document the, the registration document now a child could actually be the keeper it could be in his name he may not own the car he may not even drive the car if he's underage of course he wouldn't be allowed to drive the car but he may be somebody who cannot drive never passed his test maybe an invalid somebody who needs somebody else to drive the car or maybe it's just a family car which several members of the family use. However, if the number plate, of course, is uh, captured on, the, on these cameras that we can see in this little picture here, well, we can see that the, the car could make more than those journeys, but it's the keeper who is going to be fined, which in my mind seems very unfair because the driver isn't the, is the one doing the infringement, even though I think personally it's an infringement to even fine somebody to get onto a highway or a, a, a public road as, as often as you like. I can't see why anybody should feel that that is an infringement if you just happen to go to this side of the town more frequently than you go to that side of the town. But anyway, um, we will let the people decide at the end of the day. It just seems unfair that the keeper, who might be a 12-year-old a boy or a 6-year-old girl or an invalid who doesn't drive, is the one that's going to pay the bill. So there's that technical problem, which I think will slow the the courts down as people start to argue and say well it wasn't me that drove the car but never mind all of that 
It's the fact that you're being watched that somewhat concerns me. I'm not so keen. Now, if we have a look at uh, these 15-minute cities here, I just wanted to look at some of the imagery that has been there. If you just go and put it in, you'll get all sorts of images. And here's one uh, the e World Economic Forum sort of recommend. Here is your your 15-minute city. And you can see that the home has been placed at the at the centre of this radius, if you like, or circumference rather, all around you. There you are. Apparently, you'll be able to enjoy the outdoors. You can see down here, you can enjoy the outdoors. You can be engaged in your community. These people are just standing around watching a couple of people. They look like they're protesting, to be honest, uh, saying, why, oh, why are we living in a 15-minute city? But maybe not. The other guy's on his knees. He may be pleading, pleading, can I take the car for another journey? No, you can't. We've already done 99. One more will push us over the edge. Um, over here, it says here, you can take care of your health. And look, there is a, a man there about to put some sort of medical in procedure into an unsuspecting person who, as a result of that, may have trouble walking home. Who knows what's in it? Uh, further round, we go and we see stay active. And there's some people who looks like he's on crutches, desperately trying to stay active. And there's another person, I don't know if you can see that, whose who's crutches seem to be on the side and he's, he's trying to do some weightlifting so he can climb over the wall and no doubt escape. Um, over here, we do have somebody saying eat healthy, which is very difficult in this day and age of processed foods and all sorts of toxins and goodness knows what's that are being put into our food. But it looks like there's a lovely bunch of insects in that little display there and people are all lining up very eager to get some of mealworms and what other things it might be. And here we go in this lovely Georgian looking house, which um, not many schools are a Georgian looking house. Looks absolutely fantastic. You can go and learn in this. Perhaps they're all doing a bit of homeschooling in there rather than the, the state school, which could be doing all sorts of strange things to putting odd ideas into children's heads, you know, about their sexuality and all that, all that kind of stuff and getting rid of cash. Over here, you can work, which looks like it's in a park, which is rather nice. Right on the perimeter, you have to go to work in their idea. A couple of people behind the desk looks like it's uh, the HR department saying, excuse me, can I just double check your carbon credits? Uh, I'm not sure that... Um, You've uh, you've uh, you've overstretched yourself this week. We might have to report you to um, the the powers that be. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side over here, share and reuse. There's a bloke who uh, can't afford now anything. He's got broken furniture, and thanks to the the uh, the state of play of not earning enough money and all the money going to the government, it seems this poor bloke is having to mend a three-legged stool. Although he's only got two legs so far. And we're coming back down here and the chap's buying something saying stock up because the famine is coming. We've got rid of farms and there's no food. So that does um, seem to be a little bit of a, a trouble there um, for the people who live in these 15 minute cities. Um, I don't know whether that's the, the, the right thing that they're putting towards us, but uh, that seems to be what's being promoted on that image, random image I found online. So uh, it does sound like it's a, a great idea. The other thing that struck me about a 15-minute city, about keeping people in an enclosed area like that, is the fact that, of course, should we ever see another pandemic, and it's funny how people like Bill Gates have even hinted that there would be one. I suppose him being a very long-standing, trained medical professional who's been in that business for years and not messed about with silly things like computers, he knows exactly what is likely to come along. So, of course, we must trust him. But if you do think that there's going to be some other sort of pandemic that is past, maybe airborne or from personal, person to person, like the good old monkeypox that was everywhere for hours on end. We were worried and gritting our teeth and scratching some weird strange spots between our thighs. Um, it's a bit of a worry what to do when that something like that happens. But if you're all concentrated in a very close proximity, say in a 15 minute city where you're living, uh, ch what is it, chest by jowl? Is that the term? I can never quite remember. But if you're living in that sort of very much hugger mugger, you're on top of one another. Does it not strike you that a virus of some description like that could potentially, well, just get 
passed round everybody. And so, in a way, it's it's like you're all on top of each other, you're all going to suffer with it, which would be a huge shame if these 15-minute cities became very rapidly 15-minute morgues. But I suppose it would be very handy for the undertakers to be able to get hold of people, just bury them where they are, I suppose. So that's maybe there is a plus point to this after all. So that was something else that I um, was slightly concerned about. Now, I don't know about you, but I've noticed some... We're going back to, <coughs> excuse me, the cameras that have been surveilling us, but not just so much in our cars, but everywhere else. I don't know if you've noticed in the supermarkets, where now when you go up to these self-serving tills, there seems to be a little camera looking at you. And at first I thought, well, maybe this is to, you know, because it's not a manned till, there's nobody sort of checking over exactly what you're putting into your bag. Maybe it's there for the security camera so that they can see that you're not actually nicking things. But curiously, it's only p pointing up at your face, not at your hands. It's not looking to see if you're sticking something in a back pocket that you shouldn't be or putting more items into the bag at the end and that sort of thing. It's just looking at your face. That made me think that maybe what's going on there is a little bit of face recognition, which would be nice, wouldn't it, if when you turn up and it knows exactly the sort of items that you're buying. Maybe that's stored on a computer, purely for your benefit, so that when you come in and it says, oh, did you know? We know who you are. Hello, Richard. You haven't had your booster this week. We recommend you get your booster. In fact, go and get your booster now before we can process your food. That would be a very useful little thing, would it not, to have if you were, of course, one of those people who were very much keen to get a booster. Not so if it wasn't the sort of thing you wanted, that invasion of privacy. Maybe you, you don't hold to that sort of thing. Um, and also on cash point machines, you know, the ATMs, apparently, they're installing those so they know who is out there using cash. Why would you want to know? Why would anyone want to? Maybe the bank wants to know why I am out there pulling out cash and is thinking, hmm, you've taken out that sort of money at this place. We know the time of day and we know who you are. Well, they know who I am anyway because I put the card in. Not quite sure. But maybe if the technology now becomes face recognition, they can shut the machine down as I approach it and say, oh, your carbon credit isn't quite uh, up to spec. Or you've posted something on social media that you shouldn't really have posted. This machine now is inoperable. You don't even need your card. It won't work work at all. So maybe that is why they're doing it. It's sort of getting you in the mood. Well, I'm not very happy about that, I can tell you. Somebody suggested that actually that business of social distancing that we went through uh, practicing during the pandemic, where everybody was staying at least six feet away, that was a great method of making sure you're spread out enough so the cameras can practice their facial recognition technique. If you've got people in crowds jostling this way and that, must be quite hard for those machines to sort of work out who you are. But if you're nicely socially distanced, seems to me that it actually would be very beneficial for those cameras. Oh yes, there's uh, Richard Vobes walking down the street. There's John Brown going down the other way. They've noticed that they've bumped into each other. Oh, look at that. They're talking. I wonder what they're talking about. I don't know. Maybe it's nothing. There's an outfit here. Have a look at this. This is an outfit um, called Big Brother Watch. That's the wrong button. There we go. There they are. Big Brother Watch. Now, I've repeatedly got in touch with them, sent them an email because I would very much like to have a word with them. They are like a think tank, if you like, and they've been watching what we do. It says here, we work to roll back the surveillance state and protect the rights of everyone in the UK to be free from unfair intrusion. That's Silky Carlo, the director of Big Brother Watch. And I have uh, been in touch with them um, a few times now, but I can't seem to get anybody to reply. So if there's anybody at Big Brother Watch, particularly Silky Carlo, the director, who does appear on other programmes and does other interviews, I would very much like to talk to you about this whole subject of surveillance of what we're being looked at in all the different ways that we're being monitored whether we're being monitored online or indeed more uh, insipid I suppose in the street so there we are be interested in your thoughts on 15 minute cities these 
wonderful idea that's been thought up, dreamt up by the World Economic Forum and has been advised to the government. And the government now just seem to be on their way to roll it down. I watched a video the other day in Derby and the gentleman there who made the video was pointing the camera up at these these signs, again, above cameras or by cameras and the sign said traffic monitoring i thought that's curious isn't it they're not just now looking to see if you're going over the speed but they're actually just monitoring you which sounds very suspicious to me but anyway i'll be interested in your thoughts do let me know thank you for joining me today and i shall be back very soon with more videos